I'm Tom and I'm from The Wanted. I'm Max. Nathan. I'm Siva. And I'm Jay. All right. And I'm perched. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm stable. <laughs> Word of mouth, the name itself came from, I think, a little backstory of where we came from. And, and we weren't formed by one of these like, talent competitions, but we were, I think, very hardworking. And social media was a huge help. So we'd go and do a school tour and a club tour at the same time. And everyone that, you know, tweets says, oh, I saw the once tonight. We'd contact them and they'd see an online video every week, which we've been doing now for four years. Every Wednesday, it's still going out there. And I think. It was more about people talking about, oh, this boy band thing might be coming back. And then when we got our first number one, I think it solidified in the UK. The, the like, the hysteria is really, it's still there. And um, I think part of the album being called that is us being quite proud of where we came from. Um, and I think a lot of people assume that like we were just sh like shoved into a label, handed an album, and walked out, and it all happened overnight. But um, it was just through our fans and people really caring about what they heard on the radio. So the radio and that that's sort of the inspiration behind you know, it. I think thanks to social media as well um, the way that the name The Wanted spread across the world. Like a fungus. Like a, hopefully a healthy <laughs> fungus um, and obviously people in the UK contacted people in America saying you need to hear this song and then obviously them telling all their friends and then them ringing the radio station saying you've got to play that and then with all that we had the number one radio record last year it's, it's quite it's quite fitting, I think. So, yeah, we're really proud. Sim would call us smug, actually, I think. <laughs> Pretty damn smug. Now I'm lost in the distance. You look at me like a stranger. We really wanted to have a lot of ownership on this album. Um, so, we worked with people who we know very well, um, and a lot of people who we hang out with as well. Uh, so, there's not that awkward first, like, day of uh, hi. nice to meet you nice here's my soul you. on a plate yeah so <laughs> it's a lot Salty. easier obviously like working with people who you know and obviously know what like sort of mindset you're in and what you want to write about and usually just jam for a while and see what sits and then come up with a few hooks and like lyrical ideas and then before you know it you've got a song very very quickly It's a, a mix of, you know, all the, all the easy uh -huh. creative stuff uh, is, is sort of behind us now. And what was before us is, you know, brushing the hair, putting on the blazers, going and selling it to people, which is hopefully what this is doing. Do no, never. And, uh, and then also, yeah, we've got a tour coming up and we've got to be rehearsing because you don't want to be just, you know, churning out the same tour as last year. We want to surprise people and uh, that's what keeps people interested if you mix it up a little. So, yeah, now all the, all the creative stuff's out of the way and it's just, it's all the extras, which is fun. But well, I think we're sometimes out of our comfort zone. <laughs> oh, I mean, you're average. We're all pretty no. awful. Oh, b definitely below average. I, I think some worse than others. Yeah. I think. Like, Look at up. You, obviously. Mate, I'm top at dancing, <laughs> so mate. You're, you're, you're terrible. Mm, not terrible. Depends you on the are. arena. Pretty good dancer, to be honest. They fixed your suit for. <laughs> you can't speak. You're, you're just what? as bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I think Listen, me, Jay knows, yeah, a couple of heat answers, like. Yeah, you're your own just interpretation. Just three beats behind. <laughs> <laughs> just completely off rhythm. <laughs> well, let's just put it this way, his nickname was Nine. Yeah, so it was always like five, six, seven, and nine. That's yeah, Max in the corner. And if you know, how do you get it from an time now? We've been asked to do reality shows for about two years since, you know, like a couple of years after we started in the UK and we just felt like we hadn't got as enough traction everywhere yet to do a reality show because we didn't want that to be the first thing people knew us for so uh, we kept on going improving the album and releasing stuff and I think um, the curveball Glad You Came which sort of set the world on fire and meant that we've been working for the past two years like solid uh, that was when we were like okay we've got that behind us now let's show people personality and maybe that generates some loyalty among people that identify with you and that was a lot of fun. Brian Seacrest was all, all for us being ourselves. And um, we were very anti, like, you know, the set up choreographed stuff. Like, we're not gifted actors, or I'm certainly not. And um, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was quite no, stressful to sort of have our usual job plus have to describe how you're feeling for two hours at the end of each day. It was like, oh. But um, 
hopefully it did a lot of good. We, we got a wider fan base from it, I think. There was everything. There was that. There was uh, rolling out of bed, um, <laughs> rolling into bed. Um, <laughs> rolling in a pub. Roll, yeah. Um, rolling out of a pub. It was literally <laughs> Not rolling. day and night. Uh, we even had a guy um, that had a camera uh, all night that just follows around. I mean, a lot of it for him must have been pretty tedious. Cause you talk a lot of weird things at 3am, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you're <laughs> sort of drunk and watching Bambi or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we first heard it, we were like, oh, well, this is a very different sound for us. I think it was probably the most poppiest song we've done. Um, and obviously, when you put a name in a song, it was like, oh, oh I'm not too sure about that. Um, but we saw our manager, uh, Jay Brown, in, in New York, actually, he was like, she heard the song? Is she okay with that? Is she all right? And she was, he was like, yeah, she's fine with it. I was like, that's cool. Should we continue this then? Because <laughs> if she had said no, I'd be like, should we stop now? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was kind of cool. Um, she should do a song about us now. Called, Make it happen. Um, Party like the wanted. Like the wa oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and Max are from like just up, just up the road. Um, we're from Manchester. They're from Liverpool. Love the Beatles growing mm -hmm. up. But, uh, the thing is that like my mum used to love the very early Beatles when they first started. Um, and that was, uh, as growing up in like as a kid, she always used to have the cassettes in the car. And by the time I got to like 12, 13, they were almost instilled in my brain. So every time I listened to a Beatles song, I was like, I know all the words off by heart without even having to play a Beatles record. So uh, car sickness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so yeah, I love the Beatles, and even when they, I think they really progressed them themselves as a band and um, really changed the sound. I possibly think over the, like, the space of. Um, a few albums and um, yeah, I think what they did was amazing and when the Ed Sullivan Theatre where they first, like, first TV debut in America, pff, I mean for me that's amazing.